Off you go. I am back from Wild Family Travel. And I'm Mark from Wild Family Travel. And I'm Willow, also from Wild Family Travel. <laughs> <laughs> so back in June, our little girl uh, moved to China as part of a gap year, gap month, gap we don't know how gap long. Gap decade, <laughs> probably, you know. <laughs> However long it's going to be. Um, to be an au pair or to help a family learn English. So we thought we would sit her down and have a little bit of a talk about how she's going, what she's doing, how she's finding China, because it's, um, as parents, it's quite confronting for us to send her to a country that gets so much negative press, I suppose, in the media. This is correct. Uh, it does get negative press, but we knew that We'd been to China before and found uh, China to be quite a good country, quite a modern country. Um, safe. Safe country. Generally had everything that you would find in any Western country. So in that retrospect, we were confident that she would be okay in China. The only things we didn't know were the unknown, like where would she be living and the people she would be living with, I guess. Yes. And they were some of the biggest reasons why we have made a quick trip to China to check it out all those things. <laughs> so, when did you leave? Oh. I left on the 28th of June and I got to China that night, but I did like a, a stopover in Xiamen before I took another two hour flight to Qingdao. <laughs> Well, we probably should say that you originally wanted to go to Italy, but that didn't work out, and China, everything sort of seemed to fall into place with China, didn't it? Mm -hmm. So, okay. what do you like about China? <laughs> what a loaded question. <laughs> um, really, like, everything. I mean, one of my big reasons that, like, Coming to China was such like a, a important thing for me. It was I really wanted to experience what it was like to live in a city. Like I've grown up in a country town my entire life. If we stayed longer than a couple of weeks in somewhere, it was usually in like a small town. Um, I didn't really want to keep experiencing a small town because I was like, I've already done that. I don't think life changes that much in small towns in other countries. Um, it could, I don't know. But um, I'd never lived in a city. Uh, so I was like, when I got the offer to stay in a city of 11 million people. Um, She's a bit bigger than our just town. Just a little bit. Just a little bit bigger than, a bit bigger than our uh, 7,500 people in Mafra. <laughs> yeah. Um, that was like really exciting to me, but um, I really like. I don't think there's anything I don't really like about China, other than. You just stole my thunder, girl. My next Sorry. question was going to be, what don't you like about China? Oh, whoops! <laughs> <laughs> whoops! I answered both. Uh, the only things I really don't like are probably the spitting. That's one thing like I can't yeah. get used and to. And the blowing the nose. See, I can get used to that. That's mm. fine. Oh, it's just the spitting. The spitting is bleh. Um, and then, what's something else? I don't really... Well, that's fine if that's all yeah, you don't like. Yeah, I think that's all I really don't like. So, uh, where do you live in China? I live in a city called Qindao in Shandong region. Um, I live in the district of Laoshan. Which I think is a bit misleading because Laoshan Mountain is actually quite far away from us. We're right next to the Fushan Mountain. So. It is what it is. It is what it is. <laughs> You'll find that in Asia though a lot, don't you? That yeah. they, it may not exaggerate, but they may embellish exactly what, what it is, where it is, and yeah. all that. So. What is Qingdao known for? Or what is there to do in Qingdao? Or what is there not to do in Qingdao? Qingdao is pretty uh, well known for its beaches. It's a beach city. I live quite literally 500 metres from the beach. It's down a hill. Um, it's a very... 
national tourist spot. Like, there's not a lot of international tourists in Chindao. We can vouch for that. We were yes. the few people that were in Chindao that weren't Asian. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In my first two months, like, in Chindao by myself, um, I think I saw maybe five other Westerners in the entirety of Chindao. And then mum and dad came and we went to a couple of places and I saw more, but... Um, <laughs> yeah, but um, but chin so, out. Go are to they, beach well, are they beaches like Australia? No, no, not at all. Um, their beaches are very calm. Like there's a little bit of wave, but it's quite like. So it's more like a bay than a beach, isn't it? Yeah. Or a lake, okay. even. Yeah. Yeah. So how do you think your transition from home to living out of home with another family and in another country has gone? Honestly, my host family is very similar to my family. So um, (laughs) it's been really easy, to be honest. Um, I've had no problems. My host family are really great. Like, if I have any problems, I ask them and they're more than happy to to accommodate anything I need. Um... But no, they're quite literally so similar to these guys. (laughs) They're significantly younger. Yeah. 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 Not as good looking, but younger. Well, you did get asked if um, we were your daughters last night, which is actually, now that I say it out loud, a little bit creepy. But anyway. Yeah, it was. But uh, (laughs) so what has been, what is your favorite food in China? My favourite food is something my Lao Lao makes. Okay, you know what's a Lao Lao? My Lao Lao is my Chinese grandma. Um, So she is my host mum? (laughs) Boss? Host mum. Host mum. Her host chief female. Yeah. The lady that looks after me. Yeah. Um, She's... Sorry. (laughs) She's Tia's... Mum. So there's Lao Lao, Lao Ye, Ye Ye, and Nana, which are Gary's parents. Who is the male figure in the house? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, she makes this <coughs> pork dish, and it really reminds me of Mum's cooking, and it's so yummy. But my other favourite, I think. Has got to be Xiao Cao with wontons. Mm-hmm. Which is just Chinese barbecue. But like in the Shan, in Chindia, usually we eat them with wontons when we eat barbecue. Barbecue and wontons? Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. So, Me and Tia go after Xiao Cao. <laughs> so obviously we're in Beijing at the moment and Willow came with us. We're um, heading home to Melbourne at 1.05 a.m tomorrow morning and Willow's going back to Chindao tomorrow. Uh, have you been any other places in China since you've been here? I've been to a city called Chengde, I think is how you pronounce it. I thought it was Chengdu but it's not. Chengdu is in Sichuan province, this is in Hebei province. Um, it's also quite a tourist spot but it is pretty like international. It's where the like royal family had like a summer palace. That's like really the big thing there. I got dressed up with Lao Lao. Um, Gracie was gonna get dressed up. She kind of threw a fit. You will see that photo. I will paste it over the screen. Please don't. Yeah. It's so embarrassing. It's not. It's a she looks beautiful. Photo. So, for any for parents, I suppose we can say that it was a difficult transition for us. Um, having her move far away. I don't know how parents did it back in the day where they just could have put their kid on a plane and hoped for the best in a foreign country. We've been lucky with FaceTime and things like that. But for you, what was... what Was there a hard transition? <coughs> have you, Excuse me. What, what sort of some of the things that you may have struggled with? I guess just like getting super comfortable with the family like my family were like really chill and really fine um and I've been quite close to them pretty much from the moment that I got here but 
but like I already struggle a lot with like saying like oh like can you do this for me or like asking for things so like and I struggle with that asking these two um so that was probably the biggest struggle for me was then asking them for stuff um but otherwise, I don't really think there's like anything that's super duper challenging. Maybe using chopsticks all the time. My hands cramped up so bad at the start because I was using them three times a day, every day. Um, but now I'm a chopsticks master. Go okay. you. So, what would you have? What would you eat in a typical day? What would be a typical Chinese? day or breakfast, lunch and dinner? Just just general things that you've had more than once or that you... you Usually know. in the mornings we have boiled eggs. <laughs> That's my normal breakfast. Get a hotel in China egg. and there's boiled eggs it's everywhere everything. as well. Yeah. <laughs> Fried eggs, yeah. poached eggs. Egg is usually my breakfast. Then lunchtime, it depends on which side of the family I'm with. If I'm with Tia's family, then soup is a really, really big thing. Um, we usually have like pork and cabbage soup, but it's like, it's got spices and stuff in it, it's yum. Um, and then usually like your lunch carries on to your dinner. You have like kind of the same thing if you don't finish it all. Um, or like you'll have the same main dish and then it'll be different sides. Yeah. Um, but if I'm with, Gary's side of the family typically it's more meat heavy um, and we have a lot of fish um, but the soup we eat is different on Gary's side of the family we have like cucumber soup yeah it's actually pretty good but it's hot hot cucumber yeah but it's not it's not zucchini it's cucumber okay yeah and there was a bit of a shocking thing you told us about fried rice Oh yeah, fried rice is kind of a breakfast food here. Mm. You don't really have it for dinner or like, I mean like, you'll have it for lunch if you don't eat it for breakfast. Um, like if there's still leftovers from breakfast, then it's a side dish at lunch. Um, but otherwise, yeah, you don't really like eat it. And apparently uh, our daughter's developed a beer drinking habit. Yeah, I'm a drinker now, guys. Um, And why is that though? Qindia, Shandong region, especially Qindia, because Qindia has its own beer company and was founded by Germans. um, Founded, I don't know what everyone wants to say. Established. um, established. Um, They have their own brewery there. And then Qindia beer, I think, is the best beer in the world. No hate to any other beers. But um, it's quite light in taste which is good for me as someone who still doesn't really love beer but like we drink it because everyone else drinks it um i drink a lot with my lao yeah we have it like lunch and dinner every day i don't know what she's become <laughs> really and then there's multi Ask oh, these two about multi. It's like shotting nail varnish. It's like paint stripper. Yeah. It's okay. Nail there, it's a bit polish remover. Yeah. It's at first it's pretty paint bad. Remover. You literally you have it in a glass that's maybe this big. I reckon um, it might hold maybe ten mil, maybe fifteen mil at the most. Yeah. And you're supposed to sip it, but the sips are like most of the glass. Yeah. So you just I shot, shot it. it. Um I've gotten pretty good at drinking it now because yeah, yeah likes to drink Muay Thai more than he likes to drink beer. Um, but I'm gonna have to go back to chin down straight now. Yeah, yeah. Then I think. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I prefer beer over Muay Thai. I but think most people would. It's like I think it's the number one alcohol brand in China. It's like fifty-six percent alcohol or something. It's crazy. I wonder it hurts. It's sort of like drinking straight tequila, I would sort of say. A little bit. Even but even worse. Even yeah. even stronger. So Yeah. It's okay. Guys. Do you have any more questions for Willow? I don't think so. How have you found paying for things in China? Easy peasy, bro. Like, I thought I was gonna struggle with it. 
that I get paid through my WeChat. Um, so literally Gary just sends me money on WeChat and then I accept it and then it goes into a WeChat balance. Um, so if you have like friends in China and you don't want to have to hook up your card because sometimes cards can be a bit like iffy in China, um, ask if you can send them money and then they can send you a balance on WeChat. That's probably the easiest way to go about it. Which we've had to um, do for Mali a couple of times, haven't we? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, but they have to have a Chinese bank account to do it. Okay. So, um, but otherwise, paying super easy. You just open your WeChat, go to the like top left, top right, and there's like a, a circle with a plus in it, and it'll have scan and money. If they're asking you for a QR code, you press money and show them you, your QR code. Um, if they have a QR code, you press scan and you scan their QR code, put in however much you need to pay and press. Go. That's pretty basic in the end. Um, yeah, we've had It's no much like one. tap and go, but maybe a little bit more uh, complicated because you're actually going to open it, whereas with tap and go, you can just. Touch it's a, well, it's like a lot it's, more it's secure. Yeah, because like your QR code changes every single time, so no one can actually track like your payments. Um, unlike on Tap and Go. Fair enough. Yeah. So you're looking forward to going back to Chindao? I miss Gracie a lot. She's the little girl I look after. T was messaging me the other, the other day and apparently she was on call with Gracie because she's at her grandparents' house right now. Um, and Gracie said, I miss Willow a lot and then told her grandma that I'm her best friend. <laughs> I love her so much. Seemingly more than her parents, because she didn't say she missed us, did she? You guys are okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking, I missed you, Mum. <laughs> what did I get called by Gracie? Australian la la. <laughs> <laughs> Grandma. Yeah. She's it. Mm. Anyway, uh, yeah, so that's the wrap up on our 18 year old moving from home to China, I think. So we've come over to see her, we're all satisfied that she's safe, happy, comfortable and because she misses us and loves us so much we're coming back in three months to see her again. <laughs> Just to, you know, remind her who we are and where we live and, you know, and how, how to use a phone to call us occasionally. Yeah. It's like... And if there's anything you want to know about Willow's journey... Feel free to leave comments below and she will get back to you. I will, absolutely. I check the comments on <laughs> Facebook and YouTube. Anytime there's a post about me, you'll see. Who Someone said hi to me the other day in the comments and I responded. Excellent. I'll be there. Okay, well, from Mark, Beck and Willow at Wild Family Travel in Beijing, we will bid you farewell for now. And don't forget to check out us on Facebook. Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest, Pinterest, uh, Pinterest Instagram well. threads, uh, you name it, you'll find a channel for us there. So, anyway, you can't use TikTok here. I have to mention it to the people. Okay. You can't use TikTok, and it's a pain in my bum. Even with your VPN? No, not at all. It might be my VPN though. I'm gonna try our dad's VPN. I think it is hers because mine worked. But I'm not sure if it's also maybe the fact that I have a Chinese SIM card. That could, that be, could be it. Yeah. So, Most definitely. But I can't use it to YouTube shorts. I'm such a nerd. We can totally agree with the fact that she's a nerd. There's no problem there. Yeah. Anyway, guys, bye from Beijing. Bye! bye. <laughs> <laughs> you dingus.